aspire to feed as many people as possible, you know, with lovely nutritious food with a uh, minimal minimum environmental impact. You know, we really do know a lot about vegetables, quite a lot about cooking them as well. I mean, agriculture itself is a kind of environmentally disturbing, almost destructive act. So, you know, how can you do that with you know, with the minimum of lasting damage, not using synthetic fertilizers and and, um, and pesticides, and also thinking about the soil and the environment, and that stretches to thinking about you know how our energy is generated. Uh, yeah, during during the summer, we'll bring be bringing in uh, you know maybe 10 tons of vegetables a day, which often have to be brought down from 20 or even 25 degrees centigrade down to four so that they can um, you know give them a good shelf life and that that requires quite a lot of energy. We did a study with Exeter University to look at our energy consumption and that led to quite a few changes and some significant savings. And we've also got things like voltage regulators I think that saved about eight percent of our energy consumption. Try and take a long-term view. You know um, that you know normally, if you look at what is good environmental practice and what is good commercial economic practice, they become the same thing if you look over a long enough view. If you can persuade yourself to look for a 10-year payback rather than a three-year payback, you know you, that normally affords you the opportunity to do what is environmentally the right thing to do. Most businesses, you know, they just want to be infinitely flexible all the time, and, and flexibility, I think, is often the enemy of environmentalism and sustainability.